Hi, this is Samantha, and today we're going to look at how to get started with ClassWise. So ClassWise will be found in Clever, and you may need to search for it if it's your first time using it. Notice that I've selected the heart beside ClassWise so that it always starts in my favorites. So to enter ClassWise, I'm going to go ahead and click ClassWise, and I'm going to log in with Microsoft Azure. and I'll select my email address and the first time that you ever logged in it's going to prompt you to accept their terms and conditions. I've created a practice class for the purposes of this tutorial but here you would see all of your classes on your home screen. I've also only added one student for the purposes of this tutorial. I can actually rename my class by clicking here. So if your classes show up with a bunch of numbers or something that doesn't make sense to you, you can rename it and add it second block or first period or whatever makes sense to you. And so you would just rename it and save. I'm gonna go ahead and enter the class and show you just a few things that you can do when you're inside the class. The first thing that I'll need to do when I enter a class is to start the class. And to start a class, you always have to choose a session end time. So I'm just selecting 5 o'clock p.m. because it is after hours. The purpose of this is so that you are not controlling your students' devices when they go into another teacher's classroom. So I'm going to choose start. And now that my class has started, now I can start using the functionality of ClassWise. So I'm going to go ahead and select Class Tools. And there are a couple different things that I can do. I can open a site for my entire class. So maybe I want my entire class to go to Canva. So I'm going to type in canva.com and choose Open Site. And it's automatically going to open that for every student in my class. This particular student is not logged in, so it's not going to do anything right now. Another thing that I can do in Class Tools is I can make an announcement. This announcement will go out to the entire class, but they won't be able to reply. So it's just something that you're typing that will show up on everyone's screen. Again, in Class Tools, I can set a focus. So right now I've created one focus topic and that is projects. So I could go ahead and click here and say my students are working on a project. I've given them permission to either go to Canva or their Google Drive. If I apply this focus, every student will be able to access those two sites. To create a new focus, I'm going to select focus. I'm going to save it to my focus library and maybe this is going to be for my warm-ups. So when students come in, maybe there are a couple of different sites that they are allowed to use when they come in. I can select some from here um, or I can choose my own and then I can apply the focus. So right now I can see that we are in the focus warm up. So my students enter a class, they are only going to be able to access the websites that I have included for warm ups. In order to end the focus, I'm just going to select the X. Back in class tools, I can actually pause the internet and I can choose to pause the internet for all students or I can select only one student or only a few students. Maybe I have a student who's not on an appropriate site. I can pause the internet for that student, have a conversation with them. So right now I'll go ahead and pause the internet and I can see it's paused. To unpause the internet, I'm just gonna select end pause. For individual students, I can send them a message. So I'll click here to send a message for just this student. This student would not be able to reply to the message. If I actually want to be able to have a chat back and forth with the student, I'm gonna go to start a chat. And notice it's gonna say chat is currently turned off. So I would go ahead and turn it on and I can type my message here and send, and this will allow the student to reply to me. 
I can also open a tab. If a student is struggling to find a website, I can click here and go ahead and open the website from my device and cause that website to populate onto the student's device. Classwise also allows us to pull various reports. So I could look at a screenshot history for a student. So I would select a student, I would select a date range and search. And this student doesn't have any screenshots for today. I can also pull a report of the student journey and the student journey is actually all the websites that a student has visited. So I would select a student. Again, I would select a date range. This is gonna export to my email as a PDF. So I could add a comment on the cover page if I chose to do that, and then I'm gonna choose export. And it will pull that report of all of the websites that students have visited throughout the day, and it will email it to me. I hope that this very quick getting started tutorial has been helpful for you. Please like and subscribe for more content from Deardis.